And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Vassal here. Today we're taking a look at A Thief's Fortune from Artipia Games. This is a game that's set kind of in the Arabian Nights um, style universe. And this is maybe Prince of Persia. Essentially in this game you can see the future. Ooh, It's a time traveling style game. Seeing the future, trying to avoid the criminals that way somehow by manipulating resources and cards. So certainly one that's interesting to look at. Let's go farther. There are three decks of cards in the game, events, characters, and locations. Each of these decks has the same back on it, although the fronts are very different. And so you're going to shuffle them and place them near a title card of each so you know which ones they are. Players are going to be essentially putting cards in front of them. You have these two bars here. And your events are going to go underneath here, characters in the middle, and locations at the top. Each player gets one starting location along with a character that matches that location. This area is your present. Over here is your past. That's where cards will be discarded as time goes by. And over here is the future. Each player at the beginning of a round is going to draw one card from each of the decks plus two cards of their choice. So maybe I drew one location from characters, locations, and events. And then I took another character and locations. I'm going to look at these cards. I'm going to pick one of the cards. Let's say I pick this one. And then you're going to take two of the cards that you didn't pick and pass them to the next person. Then everyone else is going to pick another one and pass two cards, pick another one, pass two cards. When you get your final two cards, you'll pick one, and then the one that you don't pick, you'll get one of the benefits at the bottom. This is the favor area, so you can pick a benefit there. Now, whenever you take a card, so let's say I take this location here. This is in the future. It shows two gems on it, so I'll place it in the future in that area so you know which row it's going to be in. And I put the two gems on it. And this is a character, so I'd put this character here and put a lamp on it and a danger symbol on it and so on and so forth as you're going to be placing these out. Now, players are then going to, in turn order, depending what route it is, take a certain number of these tokens off of cards. So let's say I have to take five tokens off cards and let's put out some more cards to show what I would have out here. So maybe this one is here. So five tokens. As I take these tokens off, the resources that I'm going to get. So I'm going to take off five. So maybe I'll take off one, two, uh, three, four, five. Now, this is a danger token. That's not good to get. I put it here, but I really wanted the card. See, as soon as you take all the tokens off a card, that card slides over in the row to the leftmost spot. There's room for four cards in each spot. If you add another card uh, to that row, it's going to be forced out and it will go into your past, the one that's over here, the farthest to the left. But you can't use the card till you pull off all the resources on that card. And again, sometimes you don't necessarily want them. Once everyone has done that, then players are going to be taking actions uh, turn after turn. Each person is going to do one or two actions to go around the board, and you can do the same action. And you keep going until everyone passes. So, for example, the beggar says, I can spend a gem to get a point. All right, I'll do that. Uh, and then the, uh, up here, the location says, whenever you activate the beggar, I get a time token. Nice. And that's great because now I have two time tokens. See, another action you can do is you can spend two time tokens to take one of these tokens from the future. So I'll take this one here. And guess what? Vroom, this one now flies over here. The plaza now comes to my city because all the tokens are off it. Um, okay, so then let's see. This one says move a resource from a card in the future to another card in your future. Eh, or here I could have spent two time to reduce one. I could have got rid of one of these danger tokens. Eh, so really, there's nothing else that I want to do at this point, so maybe I'll pass. But as time goes by, you'll have more characters that you'll be able to use, more locations. Locations, you don't use them. They just kind of go off when your characters are done. And you'll have events. The way events works is you just play an event, and when it's done, it goes away. Get one basic resource for each danger you have. Get two points if you have the most danger amongst players. Spend six basic resources to get four points. And then when you're done, they just go to your past, which again is essentially just a big discard pile. 
Now, at the end of a round, there's a bribe phase, and you're going to have to pay a bribe for each of the danger tokens you have here. You have to spend a basic resource, which is a sword, a lamp, or a gem for each one that you have there. If you can't do that, then you'll lose victory points, but then the tokens will go away. But I had enough tokens, so I could have paid one, and then it would have stayed there and caused me more problems in the future. And then you'll start the next round and do the same thing. There are also some common future cards here that anybody can uh, take tokens off to have them come to their area. And you're just going to keep going. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. Five rounds. So you actually put all the different tokens on the board. And that works fine. I mean, it's kind of disappointing because the board look, doesn't look bad, right? But you put these tokens on in the different areas. The tokens are very easy to tell apart. Different cardboard tokens, gems, lamps, swords, etc. Uh, the cards, the board itself is a little cluttered and the cards are not so easy to tell what is done on them. But it is not difficult as you go through these cards. I like the art on them, but it's pretty clear what they do. These are not always so clear, but this is, you know, uh, you, you can look at each of these symbols and see, okay, this has something to do with those cards. And then you have a player aid symbol that's like activate a character, reduce danger. It tells you exactly what to do on the little sheet that you have. So like I said, you know, there's duplicates of the different cards and things, but they all have different, I, I don't know that there's a single card in it that, deck that's exactly the same as another one like at maybe the symbols on the bottom will be different or so like for example here's a monkey but you can see that while they do the same thing he just gives you a gem when you activate him uh, they have various other things that are on them that that you can do so the artwork's fine the whole game is fine it just it just looks a little cluttered that's my only complaint I have to say I'm always kind of a skeptic when it comes to a game that talks about time travel, future, and things like that. Because most of the time, it doesn't work, or if it does work, it's not extremely thematic. This one kind of leans towards the latter there, where it works. The, the, I mean, the system works. It's not tremendously thematic. Like, pulling resources off cards in the future makes them slide into your row. That seeing into the future? Sure, I guess. I never really got the time travel thing. To be fair, the Arabian Night theme isn't very strong either. It's not that it's bad. It works. I like the theming in general, but eh, theming's okay. So let's take a look at the game itself. So the game is kind of an interesting one. You're drafting cards, and sidebar here, one of the knocks I have against this game is I really dislike the drafting. I like drafting in general. Take some cards, pass them. But this, pass only two cards, and then of the two cards, and you keep one. And then you keep some cards in your hand, and then you pass two. It just felt clunky. Maybe it's just me. I, I just wasn't as big of a fan of that style of drafting. Why not just pass, take one, pass all four? It just, um, I don't know. Um, but the playing cards in the future. So there's kind of interesting things here. You don't want the danger. Danger makes you pay resources. But the danger cards are always better. And you want to build yourself this little engine where you can do this to turn these into points and get points and and uh, you know turn these resources into points and use this character. And when I use this character, activate this location, use this event at the right time. It really works well in that situation. And you're kind of storing resources in the future area and pulling those off when you need them, but maybe also leaving them there to pull, you know, to use a character then pull resources off something in the future to push that character in your past because you no longer need it, and then use that new character. That's a neat concept, and it works. It's, it's really cool. However, I will say that your first game, and that was the case for me, I was kind of like, wow, well, uh, it's not a very intuitive process. That pulling the resources off and then activating the cards, once you get how it works, it makes sense. Like I said, the theming isn't strong enough to, to, to make it, you know, just come naturally to people. And after a while, you're like, oh, there's some pretty neat combos you can pull off here. Now, those combos are definitely diluted by the fact that there's just a lot of cards and randomness, and you might not get the exact one that you want, even with drafting. And drafting certainly helps. And as the time goes by, if you know the whole deck better and better, it, it will help you out. The reason this one doesn't get a higher rating from me is because at the end of the day, this sort of weird drafting and weird card playing, while it works and while I don't dislike it, neither do I feel some urge to go back and try it more. 
I, I look at it and go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was fun when I played it, the, you know, the, the times I played it, but I, it, it's okay. And, and, and that's what this game comes down to me, for me. I think some people will really like this building up and stuff, but it didn't really have any grips. I never sat there and was like, ooh, I wonder what's going to happen next. And I was like, oh, I hope I get the card I want. Oh, I got it. Okay, let's take turns. Do this, do this, do this. Get points, get points. You did that. Okay. There's a few cards that affect each other, but the interaction isn't really that strong. Sure, you're fighting over those common future cards, but if you get it first, eh, so be it. So there's cool concepts here, and part of it, that was pulling resources off cards in the future to slide them in your row, that felt unique and different. So I got to give points for that, and it certainly isn't a bad game. It's just that in it, it's kind of weird because I'm always asking games to do something different, to be unique, and then this one does that, and I ping it anyway. Uh, but uh, you got to do that and be like super fun on top of that. But hey, I would like to see more stuff like this. It certainly was a, a good experience playing the game. I liked it, but I mean, it, it, got, it gets better as time goes by. It's definitely one I think you want to give more than one play to when you're trying it out because that first play is going to throw you off a bit. So at the end of the day, I can see in the future a little bit here, and I don't think this game is going to be talked about much in a year or two, but I think now some people will really enjoy it. Dice Tower Judgment, it's an intriguing little game of manipulating cards.